Hey everyone, my name is Adi. Today we will learn about the painting process from beginning to end. We will talk about the different stages of how to paint with oil colors or acrylic and the right order to paint. The process of painting begins before you even grab the brush. You have a lot of decisions to make, for example, will the painting be vertical or horizontal? How much the portion of the background will be in relation to the elements of the artwork? Will the whole element be inside the painting or should we only see part of it? The way you place things in an artwork is called composition. To make these decisions easier, you can draw small sketches, called thumbnail sketches. You can try out different options and see which one is the best. If you paint from a photograph, you might still want to do some changes. When you take pictures that you plan to paint later on, make sure that you have options to choose from. Take pictures from different angles. If you have doubts about the size of the elements, you can draw a plan in real size. After you figure out your composition, you can move on to the next stage. The first thing you want to paint is a background. It makes more sense to draw the other elements after the background and not to paint the background after the elements, because this way you will have to paint around things and between them. If you want to have a dark background, it might be better to start to paint over your canvas or board with a middle tone. Because if you do make the background dark, it will be harder to go above it with light colors. You can see an example of how to use middle tone in the video about fabric. There are ways that can make it easier to choose color for the background. You can put papers in different colors behind what you want to paint to see which one look better to you. Or you can try changing the background color with a designer program. If you have more than one main color in the background, you can divide your painting and start with painting them both in their colors. If you wish to create the plan on your canvas or board while the color is still wet, you can use palette knife to make markings on your background. There are more options how to create plans, we will talk about them more. Remember the color you used for the background or write down how you mixed it. Moving on. In this stage, place the different objects and give each object a color. If you didn't make the plan in the previous stage using a palette knife on the wet background, you can use a brush to draw a plan over the background that has dried. And when you want to erase, you can use a piece of fabric to wipe off unwanted lines. You can also draw the plan on paper and copy it. I made a video showing how to do this. While you wait for the background to dry, you can draw the plan. After you have the contour, the line around things, paint inside the contour. Paint each element of the painting in a base layer. Use the biggest brush that you can, because you don't need to paint details in this stage, just a general color. Painting each element in its color will make the painting more organized and you will be able to see better your composition. If you are not happy with your composition, then it's better to change it in this stage before you put a lot of effort into the painting. Also, the paints can be somewhat transparent. A base layer will help you to get vibrant colors 
more easily. As a preparation for the next stage, you can divide each section into one color of light and one color of shadow, but you don't have to. Let the base layer dry, add details and lighten shadow to every element. Start from the elements that are further away, that are below other elements. The last elements you paint should be the ones that in the front, that aren't hidden by anything. So when you paint, the right order is to start from the background and then to move on to the middle ground and to paint the foreground at the end. To prevent a disconnected result, you will have to re-wet the areas where the different objects meet and to create softer transition between the objects by blending them. So you have to remember the colors you used for the objects behind when you paint the objects in front of them. Sometimes it doesn't matter which object to paint first when they aren't in front of one another. In this case you can start from the right element if you are left-handed or the left element if you are right-handed. But if you put your hand on a stick, then it doesn't matter. You can also decide the order according to the colors you put on your palette. In this painting, the apples and the bow are in the same level. I painted the apples in the same day because they need the same colors. And I painted the bow in a different day after the apples have dried. When painting portraits, it's better that the face will be one of the first things you paint because it's the most important thing in the artwork. If I take this portrait as example, then the right order is to paint the sleeve first and then the lace. And to paint the hair before the ribbon. After you painted each element, it's good to check how everything looks together. Because our perception of something is influenced by the other things around it. You might have painted something that looked good at first but after you added something that has more contrast or more details, then the first thing you have painted might look unfinished. Make sure that the transitions between all the different elements are smooth and not harsh and disconnected. Sometimes it's better to add things like white highlights at the end and not when the colors are wet, so they will not blend in and disappear. When you fix something, ask yourself again if there is nothing else to add or to change. Make sure that the subject of the painting is standing out. If you have difficulty to decide whether the painting is finished or not, you can put it aside and look at it a week later with a fresh mind. Sometimes when you work hard on something and see it all the time, it becomes harder to assess it. You can also try to look at it when it's upside down. If you don't see anything else that bother you, then you can move on to draw or paint something else. I hope that you will find this video useful. You can rewatch it before you start a new painting, so the information will be fresh in your mind. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.